Welcome to lecture number 22. So today we are going to uh, study hidden variable interpretations of quantum mechanics. Uh, this is basically continuing on uh, the uh, EPR paradox uh, we studied in the last lecture where Einstein, Podolsky and Rosen uh, pointed out certain uh, con inconsistencies within quantum mechanics at that point and hidden variable interpretation, uh, hi hidden variable theories, uh, these were an approach uh, to, to find an alternative theory uh, that will not have the uh, issues that were pointed out by Einstein, Podolsky and Rosen within the quantum theory. Uh, so, uh, so before we get into today's lecture, let us just quickly look at what we did in uh, the last lecture, number 21, uh, which was essentially to review this paper and this was 1935. Uh, in which basically uh, Einstein, Podolsky and Rosen, they pointed out as to uh, what was, uh, what they thought was the inconsistencies uh, within quantum mechanics at that time. So the way this paper uh, goes is that first they were talking about the Heisenberg uncertainty relation, which is uh, uh, one of the very uh, basic principles of quantum mechanics, at least in the context of uh, one particle systems. And Heisenberg uncertainty relation basically says that a system cannot simultaneously be in the eigenstates of two non-commuting operators. So, for example, uh, a position and momentum, these are two non-commuting operators. So, a given system cannot simultaneously be in the eigenstates of both these operators. It can be in the eigenstate of either position or momentum, but it cannot be uh, an eigenstate uh, of both these operators at the same time. Another way of saying this is in putting in this uh, for form, which is in the form of an inequality, that the uncertainty in x times the uncertainty in p, the uncertainty in position and the uncertainty in momentum, that product has to be greater than h bar by 2. So, this is a fundamental constraint that, uh, that, that quantum theory puts on a system. And then this basically says that if we know the position of a system or, or a particle uh, very accurately, then we cannot have the knowledge of the momentum of the particle with arbitrary accuracy. The accuracy will then be <coughs> decided by or dictated by uh, this limit which is h bar by 2. So, these two are the uh, these two uh, statements that is uncertainty and saying that the system cannot simultaneously be in the eigenstates of two non-committing operators, uh, they, are, they, are, they are pointing out the same thing. So, this is the first principle of quantum mechanics. Now, they use this uh, fact and then they uh, consider a system of two entangled particles and in the context of two entangled particles, they show that this relation, the Heisenberg uncertain relation, this relation is apparently violated and so they uh, point out that this is inconsistent uh, uh, and, and, and a theory should not have such inconsistency, hence quantum mechanics is probably an incomplete theory. Okay, so let us look at their arguments for two entangled particles. So, here we have a system where we had two particles that had a common past that means these two particles interacted uh, in, in, in the past and after that they got separated and in w w once once they got separated there is no interaction between them. There is no, uh, uh, they, they are not interacting with each other and in fact they could even be space like separated in the, in the present. So, for such a system, then they construct a wave function corresponding to this system and they choose a very simple function, uh, wave function. Uh, I mean, this wave function could be anything, but they, this is the wave function that was chosen by Einstein, Podolsky and Rosen. This wave function is definitely allowed within quantum mechanics for a two particle system to have. Now, this wave function is basically in a uh, superposition of I mean, this is uh, this is this is a two-particle state. That this is the state corresponding to the first particle, uh, second particle, and that's the state corresponding to the first particle. And there is an integral over uh, p. So this is a superposition of such two-particle states over this p. Uh, so uh, for such a state, if we make a measurement, we find that the system will then collapse into one of this uh, two-photon uh, uh, state. And we see that this one is an eigenstate of the momentum operator of the second particle uh, with momentum minus p and that one is an eigenstate of the uh, momentum operator of the first particle with eigenvalue p. So, if we make a measurement on, on this two particle system, then we will end up getting one of these. And, and so, the, the, the uh, outcome would be that if the first particle is found to be in the momentum eigenstate with momentum p, that means if this is uh, uh, detected, then the second particle is guaranteed to be in the momentum eigenstate with momentum p. 
okay now then we also saw that this state can be written this was in the momentum basis the same state can be written in the position basis and in the position basis we see that then this is an uh, eigen state of the position operator of the second particle uh, and this is then eigen state of the uh, uh, position operator of the first particle so for this state again which is a superposition of two particle states over this x if you make a measurement we'll end up getting one of this term in the superposition and so we find then that the if, if the first particle is in the position eigen state with position x then the second particle is guaranteed to be in the position eigen state with position x plus x naught and so what we see is that we see a simultaneous correlation in two conjugate bases the x and p and we are seeing perfect simultaneous correlation in these two conjugate bases uh, but this simultaneous correlation what it points out that if we make a position measurement here then that collapses this particle to be in its position eigen get if you make a, a moment momentum measurement here then that collapses the uh, this this the uh, state of second particle to be in its momentum eigen get but the first principle says that a system cannot simultaneously be in in, in the eigen states of two non commuting operators but this is what we apparently find because there is no disturbance nothing is being done to this particle just by a measurement of this particle is deciding what the eigen state of this particle would be so this is an apparent non locality in quantum mechanics and this is what was pointed out by einstein podolsky and rosen and as a result then they are asked two questions as to if the quantum mechanics is complete and does it maybe requires additional hidden variables to explain the measurement results so this was their suggestions of saying that yeah maybe we need an alternative theory that would be able to explain the measurement result but still will not have these kind of features as non locality and so on okay so uh, uh, so so the hidden variable theory was basically an an alternative approach to 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 find a uh, to find an alternative theory that will be free of all these uh, complications but uh, before we get into that let's just uh, see this wave function that is in the uh, momentum basis we see that this wave function cannot be separated like this that this 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 wave function cannot be written as a wave function of the first particle times the wave function of the second particle uh, similarly if you look at the wave function in the position basis this is also inseparable so so this is the incept the, the the this is the uh, feature we always find that the the two photon the in, entangled wave functions are inseparable in fact this inseparability of the two particle wave function and the apparent violation of this heisenberg uncertainty or the or the, or the uh, conditional heisenberg uncertainty uh, this these were the arguments that einstein podolsky and rosen put forward for, for kind of saying that the quantum mechanics is incomplete and and uh, these these arguments are now uh, seen as what's called the entanglement within quantum mechanics and here this arguments were formed for the position momentum basis so here we 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 call it entanglement in position and momentum so uh, entanglement as we understand now it means simultaneous correlations in two conjugate variables and the inseparability of the two particle state into individual particle state okay so so far using einstein's argument we have uh, uh, defined entanglement and but this is in uh, position and momentum but we can have other pair of conjugate variables for example time and energy we can also have it there and uh, uh, similarly we can have an uncertainty relation or conditional uncertainty relation for 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 time and energy as well and in that case uh, we would refer to it as entanglement in time and energy so uh, the epr type argument which uh, is 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 what the entanglement is uh, uh, it's not that it just exists in this continuous variable basis just position momentum time energy it can also exist in finite dimensional discrete basis such as orbital angular momentum and so here is just one example this is a state this is a state in the orbital angular momentum uh, uh, basis again an infinite summation of this two particle state in which the first particle has orbital angular momentum l h bar second particle is minus l h bar but they can take in any index uh, l but again if you make a measurement out of this infinite superposition uh, we'll end up with just one term and for the, that one term we'll see that uh, the 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 uh, orbital angular momentum of the first and second particles are uh, uh, correlated in that if the first one is l the second one is minus l h bar so again this we see that the wave function here cannot be written as this uh, separable one and there would be a corresponding uncertainty relation 
uh, where we have uncertainty in orbital angular momentum and the uncertainty in its conjugate vari variable which is the angle and the product of these two uncertainties can be less than h bar by 2 and this is what is referred to as entanglement in angle and orbital angular momentum. So, an entanglement can need not only be in the infinite dimensional basis, entanglement can also be in the finite dimensional basis and in fact, it can be in a two dimensional uh, basis as well. So, in, in a two dimensional basis where two basis vectors are a, b, uh, we can write the entangled state as psi a u a plus psi b u b where, where psi is the wave function corresponding to the first particle and u is the wave function corresponding to the uh, second particle. This is entangled because we see that this state uh, wave function cannot be factorized like that or cannot be uh, uh, cannot be separated like that. So, it is an inseparable state and hence entangled. Uh, of course, we cannot have entanglement in one dimensional space since in that case it would just be a separable product state. So, if psi if it is psi a u a then this is just a, a, a separable a product state. <coughs> so, this is uh, this is not entangled. Uh, so, now let us have a concrete example of this two dimensional uh, two dimensional entangled state. We know that the polarization degree of freedom provides a uh, two dimensional basis and one example of a two dimensional basis within polarization degree of freedom is the horizontal vertical polarization basis. So, if you use horizontal vertical polarization basis then let us try to write uh, an entangled state. So, so let us say that for the first particle psi a is horizontally polarized light and u a is the vertically polarized. Again for the second particle psi uh, u a sorry this is psi b uh, u a is horizontally polarized and u b is vertically polarized. So, with that we can write this uh, uh, two dimensional entangled state in the horizontal vertical polarization basis like this 1 over root 2 h h v v. So, this is of course an inseparable state because we cannot write it like the uh, wave function of the first times the wave function of the second. And uh, so, it is an inseparable state and we also see that this is a superposition of two, two particle states one is h h the other one is v v. So, it is a superposition of these two, but of course, if you make a measurement we will either find h h or v v. So, suppose uh, we find h h then what we see is that the first particle is h polarized and second particle is also h polarized. But suppose our measurement uh, when we when we make a measurement we end up with this term and so then what we find is that whenever the first particle is b polarized the second one is also v polarized. So, this is a perfect correlation in the horizontal vertical basis that we find here. Uh, so, this was same as what we did in the EPR case where we found the perfect correlation in the momentum basis then we ask the question is there a conjugate basis as, uh, there. So, so, uh, 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 so, is, is, is there any conjugate basis here? So, in order to answer that question uh, we have to ask what is the conjugate to the horizontal vertical uh, basis. So, uh, this is the horizontal vertical basis and we know that a conjugate to this basis is the 45 minus 45 degree uh, polarization basis. And if we have, uh, so we, we can write this 45 degree polarized light in terms of horizontal vertically polarized light like this that these are the cats. So, minus 45, so 45 is h plus v minus 45 that is h minus v. Similarly, uh, from this relation uh, we can find the h we can write in terms of 45 and minus 45 like that and v we can write it like 45 plus minus 45. So, then if you substitute these uh, this expressions for h and v uh, in this one then we uh, can write the state the same state which is written in the h v basis. Now, we can write the state in the 45 minus 45 basis. So, what we find that this is again a superposition of two two photon terms first term is 45 minus 45 second term is for minus 45 minus 45. So, if we make a measurement then we let us say we either end up with this term or we end up with that term. If we end up with this term then we have that the first particle is 45 degree polarized and the second particle is also 45 degree polarized. But if, if the measurement yields this one then we have that if the first particle is minus 45 degree polarized second particle is also minus 45 degree polarized. So, this is again a perfect correlation in the minus 45 and uh, uh, plus 45 and minus 45 basis. So, this, uh, this is the same system and we find that it is correlated in the horizontal vertical basis as well as in the 45 minus 45 basis. So, that is a simultaneous correlation in two conjugate basis. So, we have simultaneous correlation in two conjugate basis and it is also an inseparable state and this is what we refer to as polarization entanglement. So, again we have tried uh, 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 giving a very similar interpretation here as the einstein podolsky rosen argument for position and, and momentum uh, operators and variables, 
and, and here it is for polarization but just polarization is two dimensional and x and p are these are uh, infinite dimensional. So, uh, what we have seen uh, is how EPR arguments can be formed uh, for infinite dimensional continuous and discrete basis as well as for the uh, two dimensional basis. So, uh, now what about EPR's question that is quantum mechanics incomplete, can it be, uh, does it require additional hidden variables to explain measurement result and what about the non-locality in quantum mechanics. So, there were efforts, there have been several efforts and in terms of hidden variable as suggested by EPR in order to get to the apparent uh, non-locality that, that we uh, discussed within EPR argument. Uh, this hidden variable is just an alternative approach uh, to, to, to find a theory that is able to explain all the predictions of quantum mechanics or, or able to explain all the measurement results that we see. Uh, but, but without having to use the notion of wave function or a state or entanglement or anything. So, this was the effort. So, uh, uh, we have seen that the science EPR argument can be constructed for infinite dimensional continuous discrete as well as two dimensional basis. So, of course, a hidden variable theory is a hidden variable theory can be worked out for infinite dimensional basis as well as for two dimensional basis. So, here we will actually just uh, uh, do uh, describe the hidden variable approach through a two dimensional version uh, through two dimensional theories only because that is simpler and once we show the failure of this theory uh, uh, for, a, for, for a two dimensional version uh, then we do not need to do any, any, any further because here we will have a theory uh, quantum theory that is able to explain all the experimental results. Uh, but, but even in two dimension we find that there are certain experimental results that the hidden variable approaches were not able to explain. Okay, so, with that uh, let us get into the hidden variable interpretations of quantum mechanics. Here again I will not get into the details of the theory itself, but I will just point out a few uh, experimental results that the, this theory is not able to explain and, and, and that would be sufficient. Uh, to kind of uh, illustrate that such theories cannot replace quantum mechanics. So, here is an entanglement uh, uh, quantum mechanical setup uh, that, that we have a source of entangled photons. So, these are the two entangled photons and they have uh, uh, this in this correlation which we call entanglement. And uh, then we also have this, this source, in fact, two independent sources. Within the source, within the, the, this, these two sources, we can have a uh, several rules as to how these sources operate, but uh, these sources are independent as far as emitting the photons are uh, concerned. So, now let us look at one measurement outcome that uh, somebody sees in the lab and then we will see if the quantum theory or uh, the, the hidden variable theory or both are able to uh, explain that or, or describe this, this measurement outcome. So, the first measurement outcome is that somebody does an experiment and you have these two photons coming again we do not know whether it is a source of entangled photon or we can describe it as a source of uh, 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 two independent sources the that is the theory but what one sees in the out uh, in, in, in the in the lab in the experiment is that we have these two photons coming in and then an experimenter is doing uh, uh, some measurements over here again in this setup also we have these two photons coming in and we do uh, these the, these the, uh, these measurements here. So, these uh, the one of the measurement outcome is that one finds that if the signal photon uh, which is this one let us say is measured to be horizontally polarized then the idler photon is also horizontally polarized and whenever signal photon is found to be vertically polarized idler photon is also vertically polarized. So, that is the measurement outcome somebody has and now one has to see if what kind of theory uh, will be able to explain this measurement outcome. So, let us first take quantum mechanics. Can we have a wave function description that can explain this measurement result? Of course, we have and which is this wave function. So, if we have a two particle wave function like h h and v v, then this would be able to explain this kind of measurement result because this says that of course, if you make a measurement, the system uh, will collapse either into this one or into that one. If it collapses here, we find that uh, whenever it collapses here, we find that both signal idler are horizontal. Whenever it collapses here, we find that both signal idler are vertical. Now, can the hidden variable model, uh, which is which is having two independent sources, can it also explain the result? Uh, so yes, it can also explain the result. And in in what way? So let's say if you have two independent sources, and let's make a few uh, few rules as far as how these sources can emit photon. 
So the first rule is both sources emit simultaneously and emit the same polarization. So, so both the sources are emitting at the same time and the same polarization. And then we have the 50% of the time both sources emit horizontal polarization and 50% of the time both sources emit vertical polarization. So with these three rules we can see that we can we are able to uh, describe or explain this measurement outcome. We do not need uh, the wave function description to, to, to explain this measurement outcome. Uh, so is this entanglement this 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 measurement outcome that we see is this entanglement the answer is no let's look at another measurement outcome here in this case the experimental an experimentalist sees that whenever a signal photon is measured to be 45 degree polarized the idler photon is also 45 degree polarized and whenever signal is minus 45 degree polarized idler is also minus 45 degree polarized so, if this is the, uh, these are the measurement results reported by an experimentalist, then the question is if quantum mechanics can uh, explain this result. So, of course, a wave function which is of this form 45, 45 minus 45 minus 45 uh, would be easily able to explain this measurement outcome because uh, this is a superposition of these two, two photon terms. If you make a measurement, the system either collapses into this term or into that term. Uh, and uh, so, if it collapses into the first term, uh, we have that the first particle, <coughs> both the particles have uh, 45 degree uh, polarization. If it collapses into the second term, then the both the particles are minus 45 degree polarized. So now the question is, can hidden variable, uh, can, can hidden variable model also uh, explain these me me measurement results? So here, what are the rules? So again, we can have a set, these set of rules that the, both the sources emit simultaneously and emit the same polarization. 50% of the time both sources emit 45 degree polarization and 50% of the time both sources emit minus 45 degree polarization. And with these three rules and with these two independent sources, we would be able to explain these measurement outcomes. So is this entanglement? No. Uh, and we have seen that this is this, this, this result, this measurement outcome, this just represents a correlation in one basis. Similarly, the, the first measurement outcome that was in the horizontal vertical basis that also represents correlation in only one basis. So and we know from EPR arguments that now that if the correlations are, are in both the basis then only we call it entanglement. Okay, so now let us look at the third measurement outcome. Here an experimentalist report that uh, whenever signal photon is measured uh, uh, is found to be horizontally polarized, idler is horizontally polarized. Whenever signal is vertical, idler is vertical. At the same time, whenever signal is measured 45 degree, uh, idler is also measured uh, found to be 45 degree and whenever signal is measured to be minus 45 degree, idler is also find, found to be minus 45 degree. So these are the set of uh, uh, correlated measurement results that the experimentalist uh, is, is reporting. Now the question is can quantum mechanics uh, explain th this measurement outcome? And the answer is yes, we have this wave function, this wave function will explain this result, th th these measurement outcomes. And of course, this wave function, the same wave function uh, can be written in the 45 minus 45 degree, uh, 45 uh, basis like this and this would be able to explain these measurement outcome. Now the question is, can the hidden variable theories, hidden variable model using two independent sources, can they also explain these measurement outcomes? And the answer is no. In fact, the challenge is no matter which and how many set of rules we make here on these two sources, we would never be able to explain these measurement outcomes. But the quantum mechanics of course can do, but hidden variable theories will never ever be able to do. Of course, we can do that both sources emit uh, simultaneously in the same polarization and then one very plausible theory seems that maybe they can emit 25% uh, uh, of the time they emit horizontal, 25% of the time they emit vertical and so on for 45 minus 45. But uh, the, we, we will see the, we will quickly see that if, if this one emits uh, 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 two horizontal, horizontal and horizontal, but experimenter has no idea and experimenter this time is measuring both vertical, uh, horizontal and 45 minus 45 degree basis. So suppose there is a horizontal, horizontal photon coming in, but the experimentalist is measuring in the 45 minus 45 degree, uh, 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 45 uh, uh, basis. And since a horizontally polarized photon has 50% chance of being found 45 and 50% of uh, chance of being found as minus 45 degree polarized photon. Then when you have H and H here, and if, but if the experiment is measuring with a 45 minus 45 uh, uh, polarizer, then there is a chance that we can get uncorrelated result that one detects a 45 and, and, and minus 45 here and, and vice versa. So this 25% for all the four polarization that model will not work and the challenge here is that no set of rules will be able to uh, 
explain this this these measurement outcomes which are basically simultaneous correlation in two conjugate bases. So, is this entanglement? Yes, this is entanglement. And through this one example, what we have shown here is uh, is that the hidden variable theories are not able to explain uh, this specific result that is the simultaneous correlation in two conjugate bases that we see here. But quantum mechanics is definitely able to explain and these things have been now seen uh, experimentally and, and kind of prove beyond doubt that yes hidden variable theories uh, uh, do not work. So, so this is this is this, this is here we have just given an introduction to the hidden variable theory and kind of shown that with this particular example that and, and for, for the two dimensional case that it actually does not work and hence it cannot uh, uh, replace quantum mechanics. So, we will not be doing the hidden variable for the continuous variable and so on this is just sufficient to kind of show that it cannot replace quantum mechanics. So, here is a kind of chronology of uh, uh, how these uh, uh, foundational debate about quantum mechanics can proceed it. So, 1935 we had EPR paper and then uh, about 15 after 15 years uh, there was hidden variable uh, theories uh, that was suggested and, and uh, worked out by David Bohm and this several other work I am just uh, pointing out to here. And then uh, until 1964 there was no way of finding out whether uh, whether we can actually experiment there was no way of finding out whether one can have hidden variable theories or not. So, in 1964 John Bell uh, he proposed an inequality and he then showed uh, through rigorous math that if these uh, the, the that quantum mechanical uh, 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 results can actually uh, uh, violate this inequality, but the hidden variable theories would not be able to uh, violate. <coughs> And then in uh, 1980s, 90s, there were several experiments uh, showing the violations of Bell inequality, basically showing that the that uh, uh, hidden variable theories basically cannot replace quantum mechanics. So there's several experiments that have actually been done. In fact, people are still making more and more complicated hidden variable theories, and then again, uh, then people are following that up with more and more updated version of Bell inequality uh, violation. So, in the next lecture we will look at this Bell inequality uh, in its original form that was given by Bell. This was given again for two dimensional uh, systems. So, we will look at the Bell inequality. So, for today's lecture uh, we will stop here. Thank you.